How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Uh, if this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. And uh, today we're gonna do something a little bit different, which is we're gonna talk about my butt. Well, not my butt, but my truck butt. <laughs> because I get a lot of questions around, you know, what shell I have and what I've done to certain things to the, the rear end of this vehicle. So I did wanna spend a little time going into some detail because when you're looking for stuff and you're scouting the internet, sometimes you don't get all the answers. And it's nice to get the point of perspective of an owner or a consumer of the products you're considering to buy. All that being said, let's jump right into the video. Okay, so let's ask the question that you're all thinking. You know, Nick, if you needed a enclosure, why don't you just buy a Forerunner, right? Um, it's a good question. Nothing against Forerunners. Um, I actually love the Forerunner as well, but I think the Tacoma just has a slightly better look. I don't know what it is, but I just gravitated more towards that. And when they announced the TRD Pro, I was pretty much hooked. So for me, that was the right choice at the time. But why did I get the shell? Well, one really good reason why I got the shell. I have two giant Labradors that are frankly scared of the elements. So I needed to put them in an enclosure so that way they could feel secure. And the added benefit was also that I knew there was gonna be times when I wanted to put stuff um, in the back of my truck, make sure that it's secure. Um, and I knew that at some point I might want to put um, a rooftop tent on. And that got me thinking. So getting a shell at that point kind of made sense. Um, and it was just a matter of figuring out which one to get. So let's spend a little time talking about the shell itself because I want to make sure you guys get um, sort of an owner's perspective on that because they're not cheap. So uh, let's take a look. So sorry guys, it's a little dirty because I'm on a dusty dirt road, but you can clearly see I went with the Lear. This is actually the XR100 model. And uh, I think that from a looks perspective, it works on the truck pretty well because you can see how the window sort of matches the cab window where I don't think all shells do that. I think some of them actually have disproportionate windows or too big of a gap um, right here, which causes the look to look a little strange. For me, I actually kind of thought this almost looks factory. I mean, it, it kind of almost looks like a forerunner um, to the untrained eye, maybe moving fast <laughs> by you. But looks perspective, I really liked the XR100 and um, it gave me some of the features and uh, future things that I really wanted in a topper. So what are those things? Let's take a look. So small detail, but makes a big difference is right here. Notice that here and here, there's no lock like on a lot of toppers. It's just one in the center. This has a lock itself with key, uh, which is great. You can turn it and lock it independently and that'll keep the glass down. But um, what I like is one lock unlocks both latches versus a lot of toppers that have individual ones. And that's a little bit of a pain in the ass. Um, so twist and it's up. Now that might not seem like that big a deal, but think if you're trying to put groceries back there or you're, you're carrying something heavy and you only have one hand free, maybe, I mean, this is easy. You just turn it and pop it in and it makes life so much better. Not to mention that the struts here are really powerful, which is nice. You saw how it popped instantly right up. And, I, and again, these struts get used every day. I can't tell you how many times a day and uh, they're super strong. One of the features of the XR100 is also this LED light, which, you know, it's nice that it's there because when you stand back and you look at the back of the truck, I mean, I love our truck. This is a great vehicle, but at night you got a brake light here, a brake light there. And of course there are both markers there. 
but that's not a lot of light. And, you know, I have a carrier that I, I insert there, um, whether I'm towing or I'm using like for my bikes or whatever. And if I were, if I actually have my bikes on there, for example, it will actually go across and basically cover up the lights. So if I'm driving at night, I think anybody who's following me struggles to be able to see my head, my brake lights. Um, so it's nice that there's a built-in LED that's connected to the brake lights. So it adds a little bit of extra security and safety. So let's talk about the windows for a second because that is an important item, right? Um, I mean, you can see here that I went with the sliding windows and if you look carefully, I have the mesh here and uh, the pet guards as well, because again, two giant Labradors. Um, this has been great. It creates a lot of awesome circulation, so my pups always feel good inside. However, a pain in the ass is you really can't, I mean, you can open it from like that, right? You can push it so that it opens from the outside, but I just wish there was like a knob here or something so that way you can, you know, scoot it back on. I mean, I mean, like literally I have to do it like that. Otherwise, you gotta get inside and push from the inside or pull from the inside, which just too much of a pain. I just wish there was, some way from the outside like a little nub right here to be able to help scoot it i know that kind of doesn't make sense and it's super specific but again that's the use case i have and uh i mean it's it just is what it is now of course there's a lot of different options that you can get today there's actually what's called a wind door which you can get a window that's a door so you open it and it flips up and then you have access to the back which is nice when you've got stuff in the back of your bed and you want to reach in and be able to push it forward or be able to pull it out. Um, for me, that wasn't really a problem because um, again, I, I really just got it for the dogs at the time. Um, but uh, if I can go back in time, I would probably get uh, a wind door on one side and leave the other side um, as a sliding door like this or a sliding window, sorry. Um, Cause that way it serves both functions. So on the Tacoma, one thing that's kind of cool is that you actually do have the ability to lock the tailgate. So there it is. And in 2017, this was not an automated feature, which was a bummer because you're spending a lot of money on a truck. You would expect to have, you know, an extra feature that, I mean, you shouldn't even have to ask for where you hit the lock and, you know, it unlocks all the doors. This is one of the doors. So it should lock and unlock. But unfortunately, this was manual. So what I ended up doing was I got a pop lock and installed that. And uh, what I did then is I made sure that it's on the same circuit as my key fob. So what's cool is, check this out. Here's my lock. Let's go ahead and lock the car. All right, so, so the lights flash, we are now locked. This can't open and neither can this which is pretty cool. So literally everything locks at the same time. And now I'm gonna unlock it. There you go, and it opens up. So I uh, I highly recommend, and I know Pop Lock's not the only company that makes locks for the tailgates, but <clears throat> I've, you know, I've had it now for probably three years almost. It's been flawless. Um, I haven't had any issues with it and it's made my life so much easier. So, um, definitely recommend the pop lock. All right, so let's talk about the inside for a minute. So first off, you might notice that the actual door here um, is smooth. It's because I've actually replaced the stock um, plastic that was here that actually looks like this, as all you guys know, um, with, some, with this flat piece here from um, a company called Mountain Hatch. And uh, you can see right here, made in the USA. Um, I know, sorry, it's dirty guys, but um, honestly, this gets use. Um, but uh, what I like about Mountain Hatch is they produce this very simple design um, this is great because I find myself always climbing on to this and my knees always used to hurt a ton. Um, and, uh, you know, if you go camping or something and you want to like rest stuff up on here, I always found that like things were more willing to move, <laughs> um, or not fit right. And just kind of, it was just annoying. Right. Um, uh, and also look, you even have cup holder cutouts, which is nice. Um, this has been great and uh i highly recommend checking them out um you know they're not paying me to say that i just uh i just think it's a great product and it does come in different colors worth a look 
Besides that, you'll also notice that I'm running a, uh, a drawer system here by a company called Dect. And uh, Dect is uh, an American company as well. Um, as you can tell, I like to support American companies whenever possible. And this is actually probably one of the cheapest ways to actually get a drawer system put into your truck. Uh, that's actually got um, great reliability, um, a lot of support, and uh, is durable. Um, this particular drawer system, uh, of course, it's been in the shell the whole time I've owned it. I've, owned, I've had it now for about, honestly, about two, three months. So not a long time, but I got it because, well, let me show you. <laughs> I mean, I got two kid seats now, as you can see, and uh, just stuff, all my camera gear today, but you know, the back seats are basically gone. So access to all the cubbies and stuff back there kind of disappeared. And I knew that when we go on trips, it'd be really great to have extra storage. And uh, there's just things I want to take with me all the time. So what better way to do it than in a deck system? So um, my experience so far has been, this is flawless. It is easy to put in, um, unintrusive, not that heavy. I think the whole system weighs right around 200 pounds, give or take 10. And uh, you know, it works really well. So check this out. I mean, we're on a little bit of a hill <laughs> at the moment, but notice how, as I pull the drawer out, it kind of dropped a little bit. Um, that's great. Like, like I said, we're on a hill and now this isn't going to slide in unless you want it to. So you open it, it'll actually stay open, which is great. And I got a few things here, just so you can see, uh, some of the gear I've got. I use, uh, this is a, a pretty cool kit. I'll show you this in a second. Um, but, uh, you can see here, I've got an open space. I, I picked up one of their dividers. Um, and then I got a toolbox here which is cool just with some basic tools that you should always keep in your truck um another divider and then back here i'm just i just have some extra jackets because sometimes you go places and somebody just ultimately forgets their jacket so it's great to have that especially in a you know survival situation you never know you could be in the wilderness and you know it's super cold and you're freezing your butt off <laughs> wouldn't it be nice to have a jacket i'll always have one on me um so that's what i'm running on this side um as for this, this is basically uh, a um, a way to jump start the truck. This is pretty cool. Check this out. Bam! This device here connects to your battery and uh, has all the cables right here, and has enough juice to be able to um, start the truck if it ever if the battery ever dies or whatever. So, kind of cool to have. Sorry, I got to use two hands there to put that zipper together um just nice to have right now on this side much bigger drawer um ball for my dogs extra space here this has got a lot of my um ropes and cables and stuff that i need for recovery gear um and if you pull that out um you can see there i got uh my recovery uh kit there with extra toe straps and stuff too this has pulleys in it and all that um so it's just nice to have um and once these things go in i mean they are they're in there they're not moving around um i don't even know if i needed these dividers but they were so cheap um but speaking of cheap you can kind of see here they make you put these little rubber these little rubber grommets here and here um and they fit into these little grooves but um I mean, I don't know. I feel like this could have been done better. This design doesn't feel like it's that um, that well done. I mean, it, it sure it's aligned in here in these channels, but it it can pop up pretty easily. If I if I give it a little nudge, it just pops up flimsily. So I wish it was an easier way to lock this down, but that's okay. Um, therefore, buy them if you want them. They have other options. They even have like a little cubby thing that nests in here. I mean, you know, it's so um, customizable. It's pretty cool. Also, locks available. If you don't, uh, if you don't have a tailgate that locks, you can get locks that will be keyed and uh, lock it. Um, you'll also notice that on top, <laughs> I actually put rubber here. This is this used to be the rubber um, covering that I had on my bed, and the reason I had it there. This is a WeatherTech, by the way. Um, I had it because my dogs were slipping and sliding on this plastic, right? 
Um, and they hated it. And I, I'm sure a lot of people right now um, hearing me talk about that who have dogs too are probably nodding their heads because dogs have these nails and they don't feel the ground underneath them sometimes when they're on surfaces like that and it freaks them out. So once I got that, it totally solved the problem. They were happy back here. Um, but what I had to do was I had to trim it up and reuse it once I got this deck system. So I had to do a lot of cutting here and you can even see like back there and stuff. And one thing I did is I actually just screwed it down with in a few different places just so that it doesn't move around because the top of the deck system is just plastic. A matter of fact, I think it's recycled plastic. This stuff here, it's, it's durable as hell, but it's also slippery as hell. So food for thought on that. Also, one thing to, to note here, if you're going to be installing this in your Tacoma, we all have these uh, this power um, port that sticks out of the side here. The problem is once this goes in, you lose um, access to it because as you can see, you, you really can't get to it. Um, so uh, what I did is I actually pulled it off and I actually screwed it in right here so that it's permanently facing this direction and it's it's on there pretty good. Um, I do need to plug that hole up somehow. I haven't really figured that part out yet um, because if I'm off road in dirt areas, I think a lot of dust will get in because that hole just kind of goes to the, the bottom of the truck. I don't know if you can see it. So that could be a problem, but ultimately what I could have done is just left the port alone and put a micro extension from there and just left the extension hanging out. And that way, if I need it, I just plug the extension or anything I have into the extension. I didn't want to do that though, because the extension itself, um, I thought was not as nice looking. Um, and I kind of like the idea of the port, um, just kind of being right there facing me. Um, so that's what I did. Well, it's getting a little dark and uh, that means we got to wrap things up, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, deep dive of the details of my rear end here. And uh, I hope you guys got some value out of all the information. Uh, I know buying things like a shell and other things. I mean, these are pretty big ticket items for a lot of folks. And you got to make sure that if you're going to spend the money, you want to get the right thing the first time. So um, I'm happy to answer any of the questions you have. Just put those questions down below. And if this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing if you got value out of this. And uh, of course, as always, check out the rest of the channel, all the other Tacoma videos I've got, and I'll catch you on the next one.